April 20th, uh, 2021, and we have another Claire Community Development meeting. Uh, we have some new participants. Um, if you want, we can do a quick um, introduction to these individuals. Just let me know, Jan, Lucas, Jakub, if you'd like to give a quick word on, you know, who you guys are, what's your interest in Claire, such like that. I, I think that would be great. Uh, some of you who took part in the last meeting already met me. As I uh, as I said, I work on um, Red Hat deployment of uh, Claire, where we also have an application called Claire Wrapper around it that integrates it tightly with uh, Red Hat ecosystem of container images. And uh, and yeah, uh, Lukáš and Jakub are my colleagues uh, who are uh, onboarding uh, on Claire work as well. So. Lukáš and Jakub, if you want to say hello. Yeah, so hi. hi. Um, oh, sorry, if you can, if you want to go first. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so hi, I'm Lukáš. So uh, I am working in Red Hat for like three years or so. And so far I've been working on uh, internal projects that deals with metadata and this kind of stuff. So. Yeah, right now I'm going through or I'm starting on Claire and I'm happy to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. And my name is Jakub. Um, as Jan mentioned, we are working on the same team. Um, and I've been at Red Hat for five years. Um, yeah, and also looking forward to working with you all. Great. Nice to meet you guys. Cool, so we have a couple of agenda items here. Um, I'll just go right down the list and I'll click it off uh, with just a couple items that I have mostly informational. So uh, me and Hank have worked out uh, a proper Claire release cadence proposal. Um, so far, it looks like it's thumbs up uh, across the board as far as the Quay team. But what this consists of is that we are going to commit to a particular day of every month that a um, release of Claire and Claire Core will take place. Um, so we'll probably stop doing these ad hoc uh, release requests and whatever is on the, um, whatever gets merged in before this release date is what will be available in those releases. Um, this is all to kind of um, act, let, other projects treat Claire as um, more of a dependency. Um, so it's something to look out for. I think um, I'm gonna bring it up today in our engineering meeting, just to get like a final no-go, uh, go or no-go. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. We'll probably stop doing requests for release and then uh, a release will happen once a month with a three month um, support commitment. So. If you're running um, any other releases within the last three months, you can expect backports. But once you fall out of that um, three month window, you'll have to bump your Claire version for any new bug fixes. I would share the document, um, but I created it with our internal um, Red Hat Google account. And it's just such a burn that we can't share those documents publicly. So I'll just copy and paste it into like a public document after this meeting and put it here just so you guys can see. I mean, yeah, so I think that's going to help a lot with just the predictability of like, when is my stuff going to come out? I think we've had some turbulence uh, dealing with, you know, oh yeah, we merged things into Claire Core, but we don't see them in Claire for a while. But this is now will be a date where Anything that's merged into Claire Core and Claire will be available at a very defined date. Um, cool. So enrichment updates. Uh, the work is underway. I'm working out the data model changes to support enrichments. If you're not aware of what enrichments is, it's the return of using uh, metadata, most specifically NVD metadata to um, oh, 
write um, auxiliary data to the vulnerability reports. So in circumstances where Alpine is missing severity, uh, the information will be available uh, via an enrichment um, in the vulnerability report. If you would like to see more information about that, you can go to Claire repository and go to discussions and then go to design and the Claire enrichment specification outlines this and all the work that's happening. And then if you are very interested in actually following the work issues.redhat.com if you go to projects yeah i wonder if i could just do project clay will that work maybe not Okay, so in progress right now, anything with this little enrichment um, signifier on the ticket description uh, are enrichment tickets. So right now I'm doing LibVolm data model, um, which is just basically prepping the database and any kind of database related code to be able to handle multiple update operation types now since Enrichments will be a new type of updater. That's underway. And then April 26, this is what I've been working on outside of just coding. Um, we're going to do a talk with OpenShift Commons about um, the Claire indexer service, the internals and how it works. So if you are unfamiliar or you're getting onboarded, Yakub and Lucas, you probably want to either get a recording of this or log into it live um, April 26th. I will add a um, link to the calendar for that. Cool, so now there's one other thing. Um, we got some correspondence about CentOS. I basically asked the CentOS um, development mailing list about if we could predictably use rel content to match CentOS and the que and the answer was like maybe but probably not uh things might not match up completely well so i'm not exactly sure if we should move forward with CentOS support especially with things moving to stream and, and everything being in flux so as of today i think we're going to take the stance that um we're not going to move forward with the CentOS support or if we do, it will be external to Claire Core, as in someone can develop the support um, and we'll find a way to run it uh, in Claire out of tree. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think I think I agree that a an out of tree um, matcher and updater is probably the only real way forward, given that there's no uh like database from the project yep yep yeah it becomes a little difficult and then you know one of the things we want to avoid is just like i'd rather not support something than support it badly and then have a bunch of tickets come up and have to constantly explain uh you know why this doesn't work well um yeah that's just how i feel about it so all right, cool. So that's all I got. Great. Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Go binary scanner. Um, it must be, I 
two weeks ago now, something like that, for um, paying for the hack and hustle day, I knocked together a um, binary scanner, Go binary scanner, uh, basically sort of ripped out what the Go tools uh, version subcommand does um, and had it pull out the module and dependency information. Um, so that's in code review. Right now, there's not a um, like di single database of a um, place to look for that. Um, so it's not like it's not going in imminently because there's no data to match against yet. Um, but the Go project is working on a vulnerability database, centralized database for Go packages and modules, or I guess just modules. Um, so I, we should be in a good position to consume that when it comes up. Um, and of course, go look at it if you're interested. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to touch on was the operator. Um, I've been working on the operator uh, for, I guess, a week, weeks now. Um, and it's getting somewhere, finally sort of got traction on actually like running code, um, figuring out uh, Kube Builder, things like that. So that, that uh, work is progressing. There's a design doc in the GitHub discussions. It's a little, it's a little loose. It's spread across, I think, the initial post and a couple comments, uh, but everything's up there. The idea is, is that um, since Claire has multiple parts, it's going to be um, individual uh, resources for each service, the indexer matcher notifier. Um, and then they'll be sort of stitched together with uh, some webhook logic that makes sure everything, if they want to reference each other, they are correctly referencing each other. And then an overall easier resource that will create the sub resources for you and optionally create a database for you if you need one. Otherwise, you just uh, spin up the individual service resources. So yeah, that's that's coming along, and uh, it's looking good. Very cool. Hey, Rune, you want to go over the Maven indexer? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Would you like to? Um, that? Yeah, I. Uh, I I thought of doing a short demo. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, shall I override your screen, Luis? What what was that? Sorry. Oh, shall I override your screen? Yeah, that should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hope you guys can see my screen. Yep. Sorry, I'm like uh, I'm working with a very bad internet. Uh, so yeah, hopefully like it will not uh, burden you much. Okay, so actually <clears throat> I've been working with this uh, Maven indexer for a while. I actually started a, it as a downstream implementation, um, uh, and it was mainly uh, integrated with uh, the CRD implementation. Then later we thought of uh, upstreaming it. So basically the Maven scanner, uh, it's similar to Python scanner. Uh, so it, uh, uh, it it extracts the um, uh, jar file content from the uh, layers. Uh, basically the, the jar files, which is being created through the Maven, uh, usually have a metadata. So the metadata will usually have the package uh, information as well as the version information. Uh, uh, so that's it, that is, that will be part of uh, uh, each jar file, which is created by the Maven tool. So it will be usually in this particular uh, 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 path. Uh, so if you extract that uh, content, you'll the, 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 the package will be in this particular uh, form. Basically, uh, in Maven, uh, each and every jar will have an unique identifier uh, that's called uh, group ID along with the artifact, uh, artifact ID. 
that 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 will be usually uh, uh, will be used to uh, uniquely identify a jar file and uh, it will also have a version um, so basically i started the implementation from scratch uh, uh, but uh, later i found that there is an implementation from the aqua security uh, team so i just uh, reused uh, in this implementation and uh, thanks to louis uh, uh, for reviewing this uh, code as well as merging it so currently the change has been available in the uh, clear core uh, master um, yeah so let me give a short demo yeah before jumping into the demo uh, i would like to add another point that uh, currently we don't have any uh, local updater for maven um, that means like uh, uh, we are able to identify uh, vulnerability data source for the maven uh, artifacts uh, i found couple of uh, data sources uh, one is from uh, uh, GitLab, uh, basically uh, it's called Gymnasium DB. But the thing is that the, their licensing model is not uh, allowing uh, us to access it uh, programmatically. So we were uh, we were in touch with them, and we are uh, trying trying to uh, get any exception for our product. Uh, other than that, there is another data source from GitHub, but uh, it seems like uh, the data is not uh, uh, that much rich when comparing to the other. Uh, other uh, data source from Git, GitLab. So uh, I'm constantly looking for that uh, data source. Um, meanwhile, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, those who are aware of uh, the remote matcher, so our remote matcher uh, from Red Hat's Codery Dependency Analytics already has uh, Maven database uh, support. So current Maven indexer is uh, uh, integrated with that and I'll be showcasing a demo with that. So the current one uh, is based on the clear core uh, command line tool. Uh, I haven't uh, really tried to run it with the actual uh, actual clear. Uh, yeah. So the repo, which I mean the image which I'm trying to uh, show here is uh, basically a Java-based uh, application. Um, it's uh, it's basically uh, used in our platform. So I'm just uh, executing this clear core cc tool uh, report uh, command to get uh, the vulnerabilities associated with uh, the java artifacts present in this particular image yeah so hopefully you guys can see that uh, uh, the report has found uh, plenty of uh, vulnerabilities in this particular image uh, let me go to the top it's plenty actually. Yeah. I think I remember someone mentioning that um, that Jackson data bind package is like the canonical example to test for because it's like the most vulnerable Java package that's ever existed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I, I guess it, it almost has 209 vulnerabilities if I remember correctly. Uh, it's pretty old anyway, so. So yeah, so with this integration, we were able to uh, analyze the uh, jar files and uh, list down the vulnerabilities. So yeah, that's, that's great. I, I'm curious when you were working through this and you were um, implementing this into Claire Core, did you find any areas where our modeling just you know fell off or didn't make sense, or was it a pretty easy experience to get the support in there because we don't get that feedback too often <laughs> uh actually i haven't really drilled down uh into the core level uh louis like uh, i was mostly working at the uh, interface level so yeah and no feedbacks as of now yeah but uh yeah definitely i'll let you guys know like in case if i find something interesting cool yeah i mean i think that's that was part of the goal of remodeling Claire anyway is that hopefully when you're doing things like this, you're not digging, you know, you are just implementing interfaces and then go on your way. So I'm kind of, I'm at least happy to hear that. Yeah, I, I'll just show another interesting fact is like, I haven't changed any uh, existing code to achieve this. So it's pretty well designed and kudos to the team. So if you look at the changes, right? Uh, the overall changes is like something like, I haven't changed any 
uh, I haven't modified any uh, existing line. I just added a uh, new line, I mean, new code uh, to, uh, to complete this integration. So, yeah. That's great. Cool. Well, that's great. Yeah, language support is always great to see. Um, yeah, I did notice that there is conversation going on about whether um, gymnasiums lag um, from updating the upstream, whether that six month period is valid or not. I wanted to respond, but I was trying to respond with um, more of like um, some kind of numerical basis. I wanted to say like, well, you know, NVD is updated this often, or these security databases are, are updated this often. So your lag of six months causes, you know, this period of time where you're just missing vulnerabilities or you're missing, you know, but I, I didn't have enough time to actually pull up those numbers. I tried to look at the MVD database, but I couldn't get like a, a diff of when the last update was. Um, but, so I, I avoided actually saying anything until I had some time to actually, you know, give them a, a, a good reason of, hey, why is six months bad? You know, we, we can all say like six months bad, but I'd like to do it empirically. Okay, so actually I was going through a white paper, uh, it is related to th this particular topic. So it has some analysis about uh, like when and how the vulnerabilities are uh, exposed and the how when like the, the time frame between the, mm -hmm. the people getting the CVE and uh, the, that has been exposed publicly. So I'm just going through the white paper, probably I can share you a link. With yeah, you. yeah, that would be great. Because that's exactly what I was looking okay. for. I was I was meant to actually reach out to you, especially with your work with SNCC so far. Whether they you know could forward you some of that data, just so we can actually go to them with some numbers. But yeah, that'd be great to give me that information because then we can respond there. Yeah, sure. I'll I'll share with you. Uh, other than that, uh, an information to Hank. Uh, actually, our remote matcher has uh, vulnerability information about Golang packages as well. So probably for your uh, Golang scanner, you can uh, give a try using our remote matcher as well. Nice, that could be pretty cool just to do like a POC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We just have to, do you have like an open API, uh, that, um, you know, documentation? Because remote matching it would actually just hit your API, correct? Right, right. So the existing implementation, uh, like uh, just a uh, few lines of tweaking will work with the existing implementation. Gotcha. Probably I can, uh, yeah, uh, probably I can just uh, raise a draft PR uh, so that the hand can give it a try. Okay. Yeah, it'd be real cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks for your presentation. That was great. Yeah. So Thank you what time is it? Cool, so we have a little bit of time. What I'd like to do is go over uh, open PRs in Claire and Claire Core, see if anything's stuck right now. And then if we do have uh, any additional time, we will then take a look at bugs. So uh, let me share my screen once again. You guys are seeing... Uh, GitHub. Okay, great. Uh, so let's see what's open for pool requests. Um, bounty concurrency. So Krazi has been going in lately uh, in a good way. He has some good uh, feedbacks here, um, but he is looking for binding the concurrency for the affected manifest um, API calls, I believe, let me see. Um, we reasoned about it a little bit. I think it's fine. We are moving to, uh, so previously our strategy for doing a lot of um, concurrency was to basically chunk the workload. So we would basically spawn a whole bunch of Go routines, um, you know, like a hundred or something, let them all complete the work let them all come back and then set off the next chunk. Recently, um, a lot of that code has been moving to using semaphores, which just you know creates more of the um, predicament where 
as soon as one is finished, another one starts. So now you have more of just kind of like chain of activity that continues to happen. I guess he must have noticed this. Um, and I have no problem with this. I mean, if we want to move away from the chunking patterns, and he is probably right about uh, it being a little bit better on burst, um, it sounds good to me. And it just follows the pattern of the other code in there anyway. So uh, I'm into this PR. Hank, if you are interested in, in anything here, we did kind of chat about a concurrency number for the SEM, right? So I wanted to kind of go with the number of CPUs because I knew that if all these Go routines start and they're immediately IO bound, they're going to get parked. So when they come back, I didn't want a lot of contention for scheduling because then they would just hold on to that connection even longer. But the other option was looking more along the... Um, correlating closer to the con pool max, which was 30. So we just picked a static value in between there, basically, to try to like negotiate like, okay, well, most likely you'll overcommit cores just a bit, which is what you want. I don't think it has to be a one-to-one, -one, uh, but you'll also be under your con limit, um, which I think is a, is a balance. I mean, no matter what, this is a very hard thing to, say definitively without actually measuring like you just need metrics here so it's mostly just uh anecdotal but i think at least an educated guess would be somewhere below the max con limit but um slightly over committing on cores so that's kind of where we we landed yeah that's, that's an app. Right. all right all right cool so yeah so this is uh open but i will probably I'll do a once over and I'll probably approve this today. Um, JSON blog fixed copy ops. This is yours. This is pretty simple, right? Yeah. Yeah. This, this we were talking about something and um, yeah, you you pointed out it doesn't actually honor the interface, and then I spotted a typo, so I just fired that. So this, oh, so you did actually make it do the sorting, huh? The, on date, sort date, do, 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 drive yep. string each one. Yep. Okay. I think that works. Let's get that. Let's get that in. Uh, needs a rebase, but when we're done with this. This is your Go binary scanner that we talked about. Yep. Um, so you graphed. Like, do you want a form my mod? Um, or you want it to sit for a bit? I think there's. I think if you if you click on it, yeah. Uh, I think I've got a question about something or other in there. Do we want to address this real quick? If you know, if we do have an answer right off the top of your head, since both people are here. Um, I mean, the reason for not. Pulling it in is, uh, I don't know, it was relatively easy to implement and, I don't know, a little, I, I, I don't, I like avoiding dependencies, so yeah, easy enough. Um, okay. There's in the initial open, um, Yeah, so it's basically like in a, in our model. I'm not entirely sure uh, how we mod how we like model um, how we model this. Like, is the mm -hmm. yeah? How do we indicate this is a single binary and then a dependency of that bi or a component of that binary? Uh, we don't really. I guess we we say it's like a the package DB is the binary path. Uh, yeah, exactly. So what I, I would do that. I would do that for now. Basically the treat it the same way as you look as like an RPM, like the packages is actually in the RPM definitions. We don't actually find them on the file system. Right. We don't have a great model for that right now. I mean, to me, it could honestly just like, look, could just like, let's agree on a string encoding, like, um, you know, database colon 
package will represent a package inside a database when it's solely housed inside that database. But we haven't, you know, conformed on any kind of encoding of a string to represent that. So, you know, right yeah. now I saw that, you know, we have like Python colon something for pip. I think now oh, that's we right. have, I did do that. Yeah. Yes. So now there, I think I think Arun followed that too and did Maven colon, if I'm not mistaken, when you're representing uh, the package database path. Um, but yeah, we'll just, I think that's fine to follow suit with that. We don't really formalize it. We probably should formalize it. Yeah, um, maybe putting some thought into how, like, if we wanna, if we wanna standardize that to be a uh, non-hierarchical URI, that might be just the easiest way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, I'll just leave a comment there. Just um, so, do you, yeah. Do you want a formal review of this, or do you want to go back with just the comments that we just made and do another pass? Uh, yeah, I think I've got a couple changes to make, and then I'll undraft it. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, Fedora support formal review, or you still want to keep it in draft for now? Um, I think just like a once over, just an RFC on it whether this, if this is something we want to do, or um, I think one of the, the big questions and hurdles for this is this doesn't work with our, with the way everything else got switched over to having like statically defined distribution okay. names. Um, mm -hmm. I think a, a six month cycle and new things showing up uh, when they're in beta, uh, means it would be really hard to keep that list up to date. It would require everyone, it would require users to install Claire updates at regular intervals to be able to just those things. Mm -hmm. Um, that's sort of the, uh, that's sort of the open question. The other one I point out there is like, how do we encode flagging things as an entire distribution as out of support. Uh, that's still sort of an open question. Yeah, yeah, currently we just don't. So what's yeah. the what's the implications of, of having a out of support distribution inside of Claire, whether a database, data model, whatever it might be, versus, you know, just more data that it uses? Well, I guess the the question is like, how do we communicate that it's out of support? I guess it could be in a side channel as an enricher, but the I guess the overall idea is like these are we kind of know because of policy, upstream policy that these outstanding vulnerabilities will never get better. They'll never get fixed. Gotcha. So is it, do we want to just, I guess, do we want to have some way in to model that, to communicate I mean, that, or should we just have, I mean, I wasn't thinking about enrichers when I like wrote this out, but that could also be a thing that gets put in there. It's true. Say to basically say like this distribution is end of life as of. You know. So when we parse vulnerability databases, there might be a fixed in version that will never get fixed because the distribution is out of support, right? Yeah, basically it'll it'll never have a fixed in version. Because we do represent, you know, like each individual vulnerability, we do represent the fact that, hey, this vulnerability is never going to get fixed, and we'll march that as flagged. Is right. that, is this... I guess the question is, like, if we can prove that your, like, sort of base OS 
is now out of support and not getting security updates at all, that might be something that's worth surfacing I got in you. our report. Although, again, I think an enricher might be a yeah. good place for this. Now that you scoped it like that, it might very well be. It might just be a new enrichment source that, you know, just is the list of distributions and has unsupported. And if they match, then, hey, yeah. Yeah, add, okay. a, add a note that the the underlying OS is out of support. Yeah, that would be, I think that's now, now that we're talking this through, I think that's a good, a good way to solve this. Okay. Good way to surface this at least. All right, cool. Rate limiter, uh, this was just waiting on testing uh timing timing test oh yeah i haven't i haven't run the timing test yet and that's on my to-do okay list. yep as soon as that's done then we'll i can make a yes or no on that the code looks fine like i think it's okay i know you worked out something with krazi um, uh yeah that's well this is like half like the actual implementation is in claire this is this bit, I guess, is just plumbing through, making sure everything actually is configurable and yep. uses the passed in configuration and doesn't just like pull HTTP clients out of the ether. Yep. All right, cool. Cool, and then there's this one who's been sitting for a while. I thought I agreed with this. I did ping you, Hank, to see if you agreed as well. Um, this is basically just a code organization ticket from a room or a PR um, about where configure lives. So drivers are updater sets. It moves the configure method to live on driver updater set go away from the registry. And then configure becomes part of the update, uh, the driver package instead of updater package. Yeah, I think that seems fine to me. Um, I'll, I'll take a, I'll put it on my list to take a look at this afternoon. Okay. All right, cool. I'll just assign this to you. So it shows up in your email. Okay. If you, yeah, great. If you, you like that. I think that's kind of how you. You've said you've mentioned that before. If assigning it to you is helpful, I don't know if it is or not. Uh, yeah, I mean it's more helpful than not. I guess. <laughs> okay, so pull request for Claire, notifier DB usage pass. I haven't been able to look at this just yet. Um, it is in draft though. Is there anything? Yeah, that it's not. Done for it's it? not done yet. It's uh, it's some some groundwork for for digging into it more. Uh, it adds some profiling on like where connections are and yeah, things like yeah, that. Yeah, I do remember that. Okay, well, when you're ready to take this out of draft, just ping me. Um, this does bring up the, let's, I'll, I'll circle back to that. Rate limiter, again, waiting on timing. You don't have to go over that again. CICD, uh, Jan, this, we requested for this to actually move to Claire Core. Uh, was there any move on that? Yeah, well, um, I reacted with the request to uh, really at least have a cursory look at this. So I don't, uh, I don't port the code that you might fundamentally disagree with. And uh, another thing is that I also don't see the secrets that are available in the in the repository, and I don't know if I can make use of the Quay token there. I mean that's fine. We can add the secret. Here's the basic logic finality. Okay, I'll I'll do this. I'll take a look at this. I think we did agree on like your reasoning around this. We're just waiting to move it to Claire Core, but I'll give this one more look after this meeting today and give you a definitive answer. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, integration tests. 
yeah, this hung for a little while, but it looks like you picked it back up. Uh, everything I saw looked good. I thought you were doing the correct thing there. Um, so you're just waiting for a final review, basically. Yeah, but uh, I posted the changes like uh, a day ago. I, I really had a hard time finding uh, time for that in the past couple yeah. of weeks. It's not super high priority, so it's totally cool. Um, it just, it's very helpful for us, um, especially that you guys are the consumers of, you know, the Rabbit MQ and Active MQ stuff. So uh, it's helpful uh, to get your opinion about these tests, read messages. Okay, cool. I'll take a look at that uh, after this meeting. Thank you. Let's see how bad I am with tabs. Uh, okay. Except OCI manifest for indexing, just the back burner, right? This is you, Hank. I think we lost Hank. Oh, he's not there. <laughs> oh, wow, I look back, his head's gone. This is a little frightening. All right, well, I know this is just a back burner. It's, uh, it's probably like a nice to have. We haven't had a much uh, request for that. Um, but I think moving to OCI is a, is a good idea just all around. I can't see any bad reason. Uh, so config allow disabling notifier. So Hank, the question around this I have, right, is like, I'm not not about it. It's less of a problem now that we killed those log lines because that was really like the annoyance. Um, but the thing is, is that disabling notif we don't really allow anything else to act like that. You know, we don't allow disabling uh, the indexer in combo mode separate from other things. So I'm either for all of it where you can run combo mode and if a piece of the config is missing at a high level, then that particular service doesn't run in combo mode or I'm for none of it, where we just combo modes, combo mode, it all runs together. I don't, I don't want to like the special treatment of like just the notifier and I get it. I know why this happened. It's just because the notifier was spamming all the logs across like most of the services. Um, so where do you want to go with well, that? that? But also the notifier is the only component that like needs configuration that doesn't have to be configured and you can still have a working system. So like it's, it's special yeah, I get what you're saying. in that, in that way. Anyway, like I have the matcher unconfigured and say you can't, then you can't run, you can't have a clear um, without a matcher. Yeah. But you can have just an indexer. So it's actually the matcher that's the only special case. I mean, you can't have a, you can't have a clear system without an indexer either. You can run, you could have just an indexer if you just wanted index reports. Well, sure, but then you don't have like the matcher part of the API. I guess my point is the notifier like needs to be configured to do anything at all. Like you can have a complete system and not a notifier. You can't have a complete system without an indexer or without a matcher. Okay. All right, so yeah. if you just run Claire and you're not running Claire like and Quay or and something else, you don't need the notifier at all. So like by by default, if it's unconfigured, it should just not start it. Like we shouldn't throw errors that bits are unconfigured. Yeah, I mean it. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I just don't like the idea that like here's a very special case of our configuration for notifier instead of it being uniform and one less thing that we need to explain across the board because combo mode is combo mode. You're expecting everything to run. I mean, I guess. But I, I mean, I, the, 
I don't know. My my argument is like you you have it configured to you don't have it configured to do anything. Why do you need it? Like you don't have it configured to send the notifications anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Is this in a reviewable state? Uh, probably not. It's at least six months old, I think. Gotcha. Do you still want to move forward with it? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't have strong feelings, I guess, one way or the other. Um, I mean, I get what you're saying. Uh, so come on, you don't want notifications. Leave the notification area blank. I think that's fine. And I guess you're right in the fact that like, yeah, if you're not sending off notifications, why are you running all the code using system resources, firing timers? Utilizing yeah. more Go routines than necessary. Yeah, and for like simple for simple setups, it's one less bit of the config you have to fill out. Okay. Okay, yeah. Well, if you do want to get it back into shape, then I think I get what you're saying. I think it makes sense. Okay. Do you want to push this into draft? I don't think I can since it's your PR, can I? Oh, I guess I guess not. Okay. I'll toggle yeah. it back into draft. Yeah, if I can, I, I I've never done that. And I don't know if I can. Open with edit, maybe? No, that's just the title. Okay. All right, cool. Uh ten minutes. Maybe we can hit clear core issues. Oh yeah, so this one, definitely worth looking at. Um, apparently we're creating duplicate uh, vulnerabilities in the database. I am not super surprised by the existence of this bug since we do a lot of exploding of data. Uh, you know, we see like a, an oval and then we'll make like multiple vulnerabilities from it. So I think some investigation has to be done about whether this is on purpose, or are we doing this just because of a software bug? I don't find I, this. I think this is the binary source thing. Oh, okay. No upstream data sources are providing. So you think that, well, I thought she pointed out that quite literally, oh, you mean, at what point, like when we're parsing the security database and we're like writing two records now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's a good place to start looking. Um, try to put this on a queue. I don't immediately see this as like a critical issue because we're not actually false reporting. We're just like giving you things twice. It's not great. Um, but I'm not sure if it's like a drop everything situation. Yeah. Clarity 4 finds incorrect package versions and vulnerabilities. Again, did you have an opinion on this one as far as where it might be? No, I haven't. I haven't really looked at this. Okay. I'll take a look at that. So there's no way to limit numbers of indexer DB connections. Um, this might fall into your recent uh, work, Hank. So were, was this covered in that notifier DB work? Yeah, that um, that uh, draft PR goes in and sets this, adds a config field, uh, starts using it. 
Cool. So let me link those. So clear core pull requests. Um, so this was actually in a. It was in Claire. Yeah. Um, it only did. Yeah, it only did it for the notifier. I think the other ones we already do it, but the notifier was exactly. just hard coded. Yep. So this was. Before it doesn't find all installed packages. Yeah, I think so. These really just need like investigation. The spell, right? Investigate. Sure. So I'll try to knock those out over the next couple of weeks. Um, is that not apply? There we go. Uh, I if it doesn't find installed packages. Because that's really just, you know, finding time to sit down. Yeah, and go poke through some dead exactly. images. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. That'll uh issues okay this is so that this will be handled uh with that linked pr incorrect version parsing for dpk archive this i, I haven't actually looked at jason reporting answer. okay so just another one OS support. Let's close this out. There's also a Jira. I don't know if you saw. There was a, a message to the mailing list. They uh, linked to the Jira issue about this. So if we're gonna close yeah. this, we should also close that. Okay. I'll I'll round up that information. Close it after the meeting. Okay. Unsupported scan results. I'd like to do a POC of distroless image as everything is today with a with a caveat. Um, yeah, I uh, I talked to someone about this mm -hmm. and they said that it should just work. Like yeah, logically there's the hole where it couldn't uninstall things, but that's not the the like basal system that spits cool. these out doesn't work that way. Awesome. So yeah, as long as there's like a documented caveat, we should be able to sort of move forward with it. So let's let's do this. Let's say plan this POC for v four dot one dot. Let's say let's give ourselves some time. So we have four dot one coming out June seventeenth. Uh, let's, let's just plan it for V4.2 tentatively. Sure. And then see if we can just nab a PLC. I really don't think it's a big, I think it'd be a nice win and it's not a big ask. So. Sure. You want to make a milestone? Should we start using milestones? Sure. Milestone. Just click here. Open, close, nothing. Okay. I'll do that after the meeting just because we're a little tight. Um, sure. But yeah, I I will make a milestone. I think with the with the you know release cadence now, it's it's going to be a lot easier to say like here are the things we're trying to do. 
in this yeah next having release, our so. own having our own release is gonna make it much easier yeah, yeah yeah exactly all right well this is pretty good um you know i'll cut it off i'm not gonna hold everyone just uh next week we should be we don't have a churn on issues too hard so we'll just grab these next week um okay. and then we'll go over claire but um Cool. Well, thanks everyone for sticking around. Um, the videos will be uploaded shortly after this to um, YouTube, the OpenShift channel, and I'll get all the announcements out. Um, cool. Well, take it easy.